Welcome once again to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm D. Lee Beard, and today I'm going to answer a viewer question on the iPad. Joseph asks, should I order the Wi-Fi version of the iPad or the 3G version? I will mostly be using it at home. Very good question. If you're only going to be using it at home, odds are probably a Wi-Fi is a better way for you to go. If you don't have a Wi-Fi router at home, buy one. It's really convenient for you to be able to access your content to both your PC as well as uh, your any wireless devices like a laptop or something like the iPad or, or an iPod Touch or even an iPhone. Um, the 3G connection, if you don't know, those are the connections that run through like the cell phone towers. So that means you can get connections while you're driving down the road. Now, how well you really need to get access while driving down the road uh, or in a parking lot? Um, that's questionable. The 3G one does cost you $130 more. So that's considerably more to get that access. Plus, you have to pay a monthly fee to have the 3G access. And a lot of you may already have a 3G connection through your, your smartphone, in which case you can still get access to your mail and quick things like that. Um, but it is an ultimate connection. The 3G is going to give you more access, but not unlimited access. It's an AT&T connection, which does not have a huge 3G network, at least not yet. Now, it is a cheap price. It's 15 bucks for a limited bandwidth, and it's uh, 30 bucks a month uh, for unlimited. So you can download all you want. The problem is the bandwidth connections, the download speeds for 3G are about one megabit per second. On your home connection, on broadband connection through Comcast, Time Warner Cable, something like that, it's going to be like 30 to 50 times that or even more. So you're going to get a much faster connection for downloading video, that kind of multimedia content. So that would probably be a faster way to go. The 3G is probably going to also eat up your battery life on the iPad. It touts a 10-hour battery life on a Wi-Fi connection, but if you put in the 3G, I don't know how bad that's going to drop it, but it's probably going to drop it uh, noticeable amount. So the 3G is not going to be quite as good in that regard. Um, there are a lot of Wi-Fi connections that are out there on the internet. I want to take you to a website here. If you go to JIWIRE and uh, J-I-W-I-R-E dot com and you look for their hotspot locations, I'll have a link to this by the way on the Ask the Techies website for this episode. And at this website you can find out where the hotspots are for internet connections in various cities that you may want to go to. So you can find out the restaurants, hotels that might have a connection that you might be able to make use of. By the way, if you wanted to test your speed, if you go to a website called speakeasy.net, you can test your download and upload speed for your computer. So for instance, right down here at the bottom, if you go to the website, and, and this link will be on our askthetechies.com site on this, for this episode, uh, speed test right here at the bottom. You click on that and it pulls up a way for you to test what your internet speed is. You're sure, you know, how fast is it going? You can try it at different times a day. So you choose the location that's near you. For me, it's Washington, D.C. And it's, down, it's testing my download speed. And it's showing me what I've got. And then it pops it up. And then it does another one for upload speed to see how fast the speed you have actually uploading files to the internet, which is usually much, much slower than what you get for download speed. And uh, it'll give you the results there. That can help you to compare like work connection to home connection to even a 3G connection for you to be able to test to see how well it works. So there you go. Uh, you get an idea for the speed. Uh, my download speed is twice as fast as my upload speed. And so that gives you a little bit of point of comparison for how well uh, your connection is compared to uh, other people in other neighborhoods or other uh, internet service providers. So that might be helpful to you. Um, now, one other thing about the iPad that I should point out, although this isn't something that you asked directly, is about which gigabyte size to get. It depends on how much content you're going to have and multimedia is going to eat up content. If you're planning on storing a whole bunch of video files on here, a bunch of movies you're going to buy off iTunes or a bunch of video podcasts like that, 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 that that's the techie show, uh, then you're going to want more gigabytes of storage space. Quite honestly, a 16 gigabytes is a lot. One of my episodes is probably going to take you about 100 to 200 megabytes per episode. Um, and that's in high definition. So you might want to you know, go for a larger one if you're going to download a lot of video. But the reality is, you can sync this with your PC or Mac and just sync the most recent episode that you haven't watched. And that frees you up. But if you're going to use this as a primary downloading of video content, you might want to consider the 32 gigabyte model. The 32 gigabyte will offer you a little bit more 
um, a storage space to fit more content, more applications, things like that. Oftentimes when you buy stuff, the middle one is the sweet spot. But I tend to think in this case, 16 gigabytes is sufficient. You deal with the 499 and you apply that extra 100 bucks to get the other accessories that they have for the iPad. And one of the accessories I do recommend, and here we go. Here's the accessories. Here's some accessories they have. If you're wanting to do a lot of typing on here, to use this as a plain, main thing to type in emails and stuff like that, and, and to recharge it, this dock is kind of nice for the keyboard. The, uh, it's going to cost you about uh, 69 bucks in order to get that keyboard dock, but that is pretty handy. And the one thing I do view as a requirement and necessity is this device right here, this little case. This is just like you would have for a notepad, something to hold it in. It will protect your iPad give you a nice cushion and it as well will allow you to prop it up in different shapes that it, so that it can stand out because it will get kind of tiring holding it while you're trying to watch a movie and this way if you take it with you let's say to a restaurant and you want to watch a video podcast of Ask the Techies or watch Star Trek you can just prop it up there in front of you and watch it pop in your headphones and you don't have to keep holding it while you're doing it so this is a way for you to consume content as well as typing using the on-screen keyboard you can flip it downward to where you can type at an angle about like this display is that I have right here. Uh, so it's angled a little bit, make it a little bit more comfortable to use. So which one should you get? The Wi-Fi or the 3G? I think it's pretty clear the Wi-Fi is ideal. The 3G is only needed if you're very mobile uh, and or you have a lot of money that you just want to blow for that occasional time that you want to get it. It does give you that additional connection. If you're always on the go, you're always on trains where you may not have Wi-Fi connections, you want to be able to access content, always flying, that would be very very nice feature for you. All right? So if you're a traveler, 3G. If you're not a big traveler, Wi-Fi.